Computer science and software engineering are absolutely chock full of different acronyms, and if you've never heard them before, it's generally pretty tough to figure them out without going and looking it up. So I decided I'd come up with a list of some of the most common acronyms that you'll hear that pertain to different parts of the industry and different levels of experience, so that the next time you hear someone saying either wet or yagni or solid, you know what the other person is talking about. Dry stands for don't repeat yourself. It's used in the context of writing dry code, and generally speaking, it's considered a good thing. It's the antidote to copy pasting code or logic and then just making small adjustments in different locations in your code base. It's building out those abstractions or building reusable code so you only have to write it once and you can always refer back to that same one piece of logic. It makes it easier to make changes because you only need to make those changes in one place. Uh, it reduces the risk of errors because you're not worried about making changes in four places and forgetting about that fifth place where you had a certain value being used. And finally, it means you're gonna have a smaller code base because you don't have so much duplicated logic, which typically is a good thing. Wet stands for write everything twice, and it serves as a direct counter to dry, not to completely ignore it, but as a reminder not to abuse dry. Instead of immediately generalizing your code as soon as there's any duplicated logic, which is what you would do if you were strictly following dry, wet is about waiting to build those abstractions until it makes sense. Initially, this means you'll have more similar or duplicated code, but in the long term, what you're protecting against is building the wrong abstractions too soon so that as your code evolves, you don't have a lot of special cases as you're trying to fit new code in with the old abstractions that just doesn't really fit nicely. Wet helps with striking the balance between writing sloppy code where you're constantly copy pasting and duplicating your logic and following dry really strictly, where as soon as there's even a hint of duplication or things doing the same thing, you're refactoring it. It's a good example of refactoring over time as it makes sense. KISS stands for keep it simple, stupid. And I've also heard this used outside of the context of software engineering, but for the software development process, what it means is when you're writing code or when you're designing a system or anything else, to focus on the simple solution first and not to prematurely build something that's more complicated if there is a simple solution that will do the job. A lot of developers fall into the trap of trying to build something that's beautiful and novel and complex when they're solving a problem. But if there's a more simple solution that would work, all you're really doing for yourself is making something that's harder to maintain, it's going to be more bug prone, and it's going to take a lot longer to build in the first place than going for the simple solution. Sometimes you can't keep it simple, or it's really, really hard to do that. But KISS is a good reminder that before you go off and build something that's really complicated, can you build something more simple that will work at least for the time being, before you build something that's a huge undertaking and is going to be much more complicated? MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product, not Most Valuable Player, and it's generally used in the context of trying to figure out an MVP for a project where you're trying to determine what is that core, most important set of features to get you started. The MVP generally isn't even meant to be a version 1.0, although it could be. It's typically just enough for early adopters to give some initial feedback and to start playing around with your idea, or maybe it's a very bare bones working prototype so you can show the potential of the full product. Establishing an MVP is just as much about deciding what's not in it as what is in it. Speed is super important in terms of making sure that you can iterate quickly and get early feedback. So if you spend a lot of time building out nice to haves and things that you don't know people want and that they're not going to provide value, that's a lot more work that you might have to throw away later when you get that note from customers that, hey, this isn't really the direction we want or this isn't the type of thing that we would like to see. That's a lot of work you're gonna throw away because it wasn't really part of the MVP in the first place. This fits in nicely with the methodology behind Agile, which is very much iterative and getting feedback and making changes compared to something like Waterfall, which is gather all of the requirements up front, try to build the entire thing, and then you cross your fingers, you deliver it to the customer, and you hope that's what they wanted. Yagni stands for you aren't or you ain't gonna need it, and it fits in nicely with the discussion around the MVP, which is, do we need to build out feature XYZ? Does that need to be prioritized right now? Yagni, you ain't gonna need it. It's a mindset that involves constantly questioning whether or not you want to invest time and resources into things, focusing on cutting down complexity and building the most slim essential set of features that's going to be the core of what you're trying to build, removing all of the fluff, at least for right now. Yagni helps you prioritize the most important things, but just like the MVP, there's no hard and fast rule that says this is something that's important and this isn't. It requires intentionality and making hard decisions around things that maybe you would like to see that in there, maybe it is something you're really fond of, 
but does it really make sense? Is this part of the MVP? Is this essential to what we're trying to build? Should we be focusing on other things first before we get to these other things that maybe someday we'll build, but not right now? Solid stands for five separate things that when used in tandem are considered best practices for developing software. Single responsibility, open closed, Liskov substitution, interface segregation, and dependency inversion. Single responsibility means that a piece of code should only have one reason to change, meaning it should only really be doing one thing. It should have a single responsibility. You generally hear about this at the class level. I have also heard it used at the method level. Conceptually, it doesn't make much of a difference. It's the same general idea. The open close principle states that your code should be open to extension, so you can do more things on top of it. You can expand on it, but close to modification, which is what's already there. You're not changing that behavior. You're just building on top of it and around it. Liskov substitution means that an object from a superclass should be replaceable by an object from a subclass. Interface segregation means that my code shouldn't need to implement methods on interfaces that it doesn't use. And generally what this means is instead of having really large interfaces that are super over encompassing, when my one thing that's implementing it only is trying to do a subset of that functionality, it's splitting up a large interface into multiple smaller interfaces so they can only implement the ones that I actually care about. And finally, dependency inversion states that high-level modules shouldn't be depending on the details of low-level modules. We should be depending on abstractions, which results in looser coupling, which is a good thing. NIH stands for not invented here, and it's generally used in the context of people being wary of reusing patterns or code in favor of rolling their own. Basically, people don't want to use something if they didn't invent it themselves. There are times when this mindset makes sense, whether it's from a security perspective or because you need a really specialized solution for whatever it is you're trying to do. But in a lot of cases, it results in a lot of wasted time and effort, higher maintenance costs, and a greater risk of bugs than using something that just works that has already been optimized and tested by the rest of the community. So that's a few of the most common acronyms that you'll find in the field. Obviously, there are a ton more acronyms depending on what subfield you're in or what company you're working at or even what tech stack you're in. So if there are other acronyms that you feel like I should have included in this list that I left out, feel free to leave them in a comment below. Anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.